I would request the distinguished speakers of the inaugural session to please come on dais, starting with Mr. Mahendra Kumar Parra, Commissioner Industries, uh, Dr. Manisha Aroda, Commissioner Bureau of Investment Promotion, ma'am, on the dais, please. Uh, Dr. Ajay Dekar, Mr. Paritosh Gangriya, Mr. Bimal Patwari, So, uh, in the interest of time and uh, for the convenience, those who have managed to come early, we are starting the program. Other guests will join us in due course of time. And a warm welcome to the seventh edition of uh, Digital Rajasthan Conclave. In fact, we started this journey in 2016 with, in partnership with STPI. And we are, today we are at the seventh edition. In fact, the last two editions were held virtually due to COVID. <coughs> But we are fortunate that we are again able to meet physically and technology in any case has touched our lives like never before and the kind of transformation that we have seen in our lifetimes in technology. Starting from a time sir, when even landline phone was a luxury to a time when we have more than 1.2 billion mobile phone users, over 600 billion smartphone users and recently one of the service providers had launched the 5G services in Jaipur. So we have travelled a long distance and we could offset the effect of the pandemic also because of our investment in technology. So imagine of a situation if this would have hit us 25 years back then what would have been the effect. But since we were technology, technologically empowered we were able to manage our governance, education, entertainment, even business to a large extent. And Dr. Data will tell us the rates and, and the speed at which he was uh, managing to provide internet to the people of Rajasthan and what we have come to it today where it's in every hand of uh, uh, just at the click of the button you have all the informations with you. So without taking much of your time and uh, we will start with the session. <laughs> We will start with Mr. Bimal Patwari, who is Chairman of Vicky Rajasthan Subcommittee on IT and Startups <coughs> and CEO of Pinnacle Infotech Limited. Just a brief introduction that he is a first generation entrepreneur and founder of Pinnacle Infotech, the global leader in BI and service to the international engineering construction industry. And after graduating as an electronics engineer from IIT Kharagpur, he earned his postgraduate diploma in management from IIM Lucknow where he was awarded Director's Gold Medal for Academic Excellence. And <clears throat> with a st starting with a small setup, Pinnacle has successfully executed 7,500 plus BIM projects over the last 30 plus years and has made India prominent in map, map of global BIM industry. And some of the iconic projects which Pinnacle has executed worldwide include <coughs> Jeddah Tower, Lucid Stadium, Lord's Cricket Ground, Compton and Edrix Stands, Battersea Power Station, Intel Corporation, Amazon Data Center, IIT Bilai, Dubai International Airport, <coughs> C4, Amuja City Center, and Mishra Phase 3, Doha, Qatar, Hazrat, Shah Jalal International Airport, etc. Pinnacle has established nine state-of-art global delivery centers across seven countries in five continents for seamless communication with uh, clients. And Mr. Patwari is uh, extensively traveling and giving talks on conferences like Autodesk and a lot of other such platforms and is actively involved with various industry bodies. So, welcome sir and over to you. Thanks Atunji. Uh, distinguished guests on the dais, Dr. Manisha Arora, Mr. Mahendra Kumar Pare, Mr. Paritos Dandriyan, Dr. Ajay Datta, Mr. Chintan Bakshi, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, a very warm welcome and good morning to all of you. It, it is indeed an honor and proud privilege to be amongst you all in this 7th edition of Digital Rajasthan Conclave today. Topic for this year 
embracing technologies transforming lives is really appropriate for our country and the world today and i would like to thank atul ji and fiki for choosing this very appropriate topic and hosting this digital rajasthan conclave every year technology innovation has been disrupting nations and industries worldwide with proliferating automation internet penetration and the booming telecom sector nowadays it is hard to imagine any aspect of our life and we'll be discussing some of them today being untouched by technology we have achieved our country substantial success in application of latest technologies innovations including artificial intelligence iot 5g technology blockchain augmented reality virtual reality cloud and so on and these are no more buzzwords today these are not these are things which are happening in our everyday life and this kind of conclave really brings awareness about these technologies and what's happening <clears throat> in the industry and what what can we anticipate in the coming years in 2022 indian tech industry witnessed a massive growth and resulted in a total revenue of us dollar 227 billion it is it is just amazing and artificial intelligence itself generated a total revenue of 12.3 billion in the year and projected to grow to 71 billion by in the next 4 years our country has already 80 crore internet users friends can you imagine the power of 80 crore internet users and is a hope to more than 75 crore smartphones more than 100 33 crore people today are enrolled in aadhaar and gst has brought more than 10 million businesses onto a common digital platform there are more than 1.1 billion mobile connections in india today equivalent to 79% of our population can you imagine 79% of our population already connected with internet data costs in our country have reduced by 95% since 2013 we have the fifth lowest internet data rates in the world even in the electronics manufacturing we are really becoming the art nirbhar the value of electronics manufacturing in india has touched 75 billion dollars in 2021 there are there were only two mobile manufacturing units in 2014 and today we have more than 250 mobile phones components and accessory manufacturing units in the country from two manufacturing units in 2014 we have moved to 250 such companies and we have developed our own 4g and 5g technologies the inclusive character of digital india provides access to high speed internet to the farthest hamlet ensuring access to assisted digital services all over the country friends i would like to briefly touch upon what are the great technologies that have already disrupted and what is going to disrupt in the coming years let me start with healthcare some of the most significant disruptions and transformations are happening in the healthcare industry today even the remote villages in our country they can access quality healthcare services through digital connections today the ai can detect diseases and help analyze medical data it is predicted that the e doctor will 
save 90 percent of the time spent by a normal doctor so days are coming when you go to a doctor all your data all your prescriptions previous past prescriptions and your reports will be analyzed by this e-doctor and the doctor will just get a one page and report from this e-doctor providing possibly the what are the summary of the complete uh, your life and what are the possible solutions to your problem that is the kind of disruptions we are talking about some articles claim my friend listen to this very carefully that if you can live in 2050 then you are immortal nobody will be able to kill you we are the medical technology is now saying that you know what you have to do after 2050 just go to a workshop they say after car ki workshop hoti hai. Yeah, you know you take your <coughs> old beaten car and it changes all the puja in the car and it comes out with a new car so you will go to these medical workshops get your liver kidney heart whatever eyes replaced and come out young man 40 years younger to what you are and this can go on and go on so imagine and today it's very important you know, to understand the social implications of these transformations. Imagine, you know, and many of you, you know, we are all thrust with 30 years of marriage. What will happen if the marriages last 120 years? Then wonder the impacts of that. The Neuralink technology that aims to connect human brain to computer. They have implanted coin-sized chips inside our brain and the computer will be able to read what's going through your brain. Already they are trying to solve the blindness problem by implanting chips or some electrodes in your, in your brain which will read with the camera and give the directions to the blind people. Once again, imagine the implications because today we also have to look at how it is transforming lives on a lighter vein. What will be the implication if we all know what is going in the minds of the people across, sitting across? Imagine husband, wife, imagine boss and, the next, and his uh, reporting. They know, you know, if I can know that how many of you, you know, what you are thinking about me, the life is going to change, life is going to disrupt and we got to be prepared that what's going to happen. But just on a lighter way, it would be so easy to decode man's simple bread. How we man are very simple bread. There's one single wire going from one end to another end. But the real challenge for the technology will be to unearth a female brain so complex with wire running all over the brain. Transportation. Imagine in coming years and not many years from now, there will be no need for traffic signals. You will have the driverless car. They will be commuting, commuting with the, with the 5G technology that has come. So they will be commuting with each other and with the traffic signals electronically and find out what is the shortest path, what is where they should go, there should be lesser and lesser traffic congestion happening on the roads. So these are the kind of disruptions that we can expect in the transportation industry. In the agriculture industry, again, a lot of transformation is happening. The AI sensors that, you know, you can detect the soil, the patterns, the crop patterns, so many startups have, have started and they are disrupting the agriculture, the e chopal and the various initiatives by the government in the agriculture sector is once again making a drastic change in our industry. Same thing is happening with the construction industry. I cannot help. Uh, so just two minutes more, you know, because you told me to set up the... <laughs> Session. So I'm just trying to, I know we have got some great speakers and today 
and they'll be talking about all these things in depth that how these technologies are making changes in our life. The construction industry will try to make it paperless. That a site worker, when he comes to the site, he will have wearing the glasses and it will have all the data that where he has to put the cables, where he has to do anything, where he has to pour the concrete, where he has to lay the brick. No more discussions, you know, no more papers and no more confusions on the site. We are moving towards that industry. Guy Mata. You know, I, I talked about this last time. Now, an Austrian technology company, Smackstep, they have created one chip. Already this is in use in these, these technologies. So this is put inside cow's stomach. And it is giving continuous health data over Wi-Fi, providing minute by minute data on cow's activities and movements in stomach, the pH of its stomach and temperature. So today, cow, we emotions nahi so the technology is continuously and their dashboards which are automatically monitoring. So if you have 1000 cows in your farm, so the technology is automatically monitoring that what, which cow needs attention, what is happening, you know, the, all the, who, which cow is hungry, which has got a problem. So same thing is happening with the facilities management in the industry. So new tech, digital ecosystems are already visible, reshaping consumer produ uh, producer interactions in the agriculture, healthcare, retail, logistics and other sectors. The productivity unlocked by the digital economy could create 60 to 65 million jobs by 2025. Many of them requiring functional digital skills according to our estimates. Now, I have told all the good things about the technology, but what are the implications of this on our society? What do we need? What are the consequences? Because anything good happening, there are consequences also. So, every introduction of technology is followed by an apprehension of employment reduction. We always think, you know, when the ATM were introduced in the banks, there was a huge strikes and things like that, that ATMs means you are replacing all the manpower, you know, now no more cash, uh, cashiers are required in the bank. But today, the banking in industry employs much more people than the pre-ATM days. Same story with publishing industry. Do you remember those old days with the newspapers, they used to have those blocks and you know, print everything through the blocks today. So, but friends, technology does not reduce the number of people, does not reduce the employment. What it does is, it changes the type of people that are required, the type of jobs that are required in the industry. So, our challenge is to retrain and redeploy these people, 40 to 45 million workers in our country. That is our challenge. We need to change the curriculum in schools and colleges. We need to retrain our people in the industry to make them employable, to make them work with the new technologies. Imagine the, the railway industry in, in, the, in the government, right? When the bank is in the railways, when the computer were introduced, it totally changed the industry. Banking totally changed the industry. So the whole industry was retrained, redeployed, and the manpower has only increased because there are more options created and more things created. There is an uneven adoption of digital technology across regions and companies. There are some states, some districts which are quite advanced, and there are a lot of them which are behind. So we need to ensure, and I'm so happy that today uh, FIKI has brought the administration, the academia, the industry, all of them together to discuss these points that how can we resolve, what are the new challenges that are coming up and how can we resolve these issues. Friends, cyber security. You know, with these advancements in technology, we are also experiencing heightened risks associated with the cyber security. 
the sophistication of cyber threats is increasing. I'm sure every day so many people will be informing you about the lotteries that you are getting. Uh, everybody will get a call, you know, of the lotteries <laughs> and the free gifts awards that we are giving. So we need to be very careful. There are a lot of gullible people and even sophisticated people are also being trapped with the new and the new smart, cunning ways of these people. I am proud to finally share that Rajasthan is already moving fast to realize the vision of digital Rajasthan and digital India as a whole. There is comprehensive e-governance architecture in place and today we have very senior functionaries from the government who would be enlightening us on the various initiatives that government has already taken and what more we can expect. Today we have a dedicated session addressing our theme and a panel discussion on emerging technologies and trends securing the digital frontiers and we have very established and reputed speakers. We, we are glad to provide a platform for collaboration of stakeholders from different industries to develop a new solution for our future. Thank you for attending this session. Thanks. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. And moving for, forward, I would like to invite Mr. Chintan Bakshi, who is partner in incubation, CIIE.co, and uh, it's India's leading startup incubation center, leading regional incubation vertical at the organization. And he brings unique experience of starting and scaling social enterprises and tech startup companies, primarily in the rural and bottom of the pyramid space. And he has six years of uh, project management experience also in companies like Big Bang Ventures, Maruti Suzuki, Taj Group, and 19 years of startup founder and in startup incubation experience. And he has co also co founded two startups in the past. And he is an engineering graduate from IIT Delhi and MBA from IIM Bangalore. And he is passionate about adoption of exp experiential and alternative education systems and revival of. India and indigenous knowledge and spiritual traditions of India. So, over to you, Mr. Bakshi. Thank you, Atulji, <coughs> uh, for that introduction and very good morning to everyone, distinguished uh, panel members, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I won't take much time. Uh, as Bimaji mentioned, we have a power pack uh, panel today, uh, speakers. Uh, what I thought I'd do is Bimaji gave a very good overview of how technology uh, is, is kind of impacting society within India. I thought I'll, I'll maybe take some specific examples, given that we work at the grassroots level with startups who are trying to implement some of these technologies. Uh, so maybe that's what I'll do. Before, before I kind of go there, uh, I would also again like to uh, thank Fiki for having a lot of startup focus in this conference. Uh, we are actually having a startup pitch, pitching session happening parallel which will start at about uh, 12. Uh, we are having a panel discussion in the, in the afternoon uh, with some of these startups where they talk about their experiences. Uh, so I think thanks a lot. I think startups are a very important element of digital transformation and kudos to Vicky for being able to look at that and integrating sessions on startups as part of this conference. I think we have been doing it for the last uh, couple of uh, conferences. Of course, the last two conferences were virtual or did not happen physically. So I think it's great that we have carried forward this, uh, uh, this tradition forward. Uh, a quick intro about uh, my organization, uh, CIO, we were better known as Startup Voices through a wonderful demo we had with Rico, uh, which I think set the base for setting the ecosystem in, in Rajasthan. Uh, we are now, as part of CIO, operating in multiple geographies, uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Northeast, we have uh, some very interesting projects happening with the government where we are trying to support startups in the agri space. I mean, essentially trying to look at the regions where, where there are some strengths and working with the local partners and trying to create an ecosystem in, in these regions. Uh, uh, I mentioned that we are going to have a, and I thought, I thought, I thought I'll give a few examples of how startups are trying to disrupt and bring some of these technologies that Bimaji talked about. 
so in the session that we are going to have today, uh, you know, uh, some of the some of the startups which will be presenting, I thought I'd quickly uh, give you a sense of who these are. Sorry, some of the files are opening, but uh, you know, for example, there is a startup from Udaipur which is creating digital avatars. So as a company, if you which is what Vimal wants to talk about, so in a way your customer service, your customer interface, which right now happens through IVR and all that, which is very, it's become very impersonal and it's very difficult to get to a, uh, an operator on the other side. So you can have digital avatars of whoever you want. So it could even be the CEO of the company interacting with the, uh, with the customer and, and, and doing the first level of customer servicing. Uh, so instead of an idea, you actually are speaking to a digital avatar. So that's that's one of the startups which will be presenting. There are uh, we talked about electronics. There are two or three startups presenting today, which are in the electronic space in the in the medical area. Uh, there's a startup which is working with the artisans of uh, shoe artisans of Agra, uh, Kolhapur, etc., and trying to create through digitally trying to create us a value chain uh, so that they can sell to large retailers. So these are some of the examples of, uh, of, of the startups which are presenting today uh, in terms of uh, what all they are doing. Uh, what I will also quickly do, we, as, as CIO we did about 27 investments uh, last year and to give you a sense of where startups are innovating and you know most of these areas are covered by Bimalji whether it is health, agri, uh, things like that. Uh, so you know I don't know whether a lot of you know that there is still there still isn't a machine which makes Indian tea, right? While there are coffee making machines, etc., where you can program and, and put your choices and you get a standardized cup of coffee, but you still don't have a good machine which can make the Indian chai the way we make it. Uh, so that's one of the investments that we have done last year. So this is a again a uh, electronics and software uh, uh, sort of uh, innovation, and and these guys are trying to install it in offices, you know where. You can just kind of plug in your uh, whether you want a light tea or a moderate or a strong tea, and you know the tea comes out. Uh, we have also invested in a startup which is enabling the various craft clusters across India and creating YouTube videos almost like master classes where the artisan talks about what their craft is, and through that they generate commerce. So it's called social commerce. So instead of just going to a website and buying a Maheshwar sari, you actually take a class and understand what a Maheshwar Sari is, what are the features, how it is made, etc. And then you can solve a pattern. You know, so this is one of the startups. We talk about healthcare. There are two startups that we have invested in which are working around mental health. Uh, and they are enabling uh, through, through technology. One of them is a hardware. There is a product which sits on your head and it's, it's able to detect your neuro uh, uh, radiations and is able to then recommend uh, therapy or, or meditation or music, these kind of things. So this is another startup that we have invested in last year. Uh, there is another startup from Jaipur <coughs> which is working towards creating small food processing units which can be mounted on a, on a vehicle and they can then go to a farm and instead of the farmer let's say transporting guava, they have done the first experiment with guava, you, you take it to this uh, food processing machine and you get guava, guava pulp. So you are only transporting the pulp to a food processing company or something like that. So you, so A, you are getting a better price. B, you don't have to transport the entire thing, and you are also getting connected directly because the food processing industry can directly buy guava uh, So these are I think, some of the examples. I thought I'll quickly talk about. There are many more. Uh, I'm also being mindful of the time. Uh, one last thing that I would like to talk about is that uh, as CIO, we are also uh, trying to now do a very large program focus around the handicraft sector. Uh, I mean over the last 4 to 5 years we have supported about 30, 31 startups which are working with artisans uh, and in a way ensuring some design intervention, technology intervention, market connect, uh, you know reduction in costs in terms of technologies which the artisans can use uh, to improve their productivity, so on and so forth, so for transparency so that let's say if you are exporting handicrafts to Europe you know exactly that it's a handmade product, uh, right? So there are some pro there are some IoT devices which can fit onto a, a handloom, uh, a weaving, uh, a, you know, handloom, uh, and you know it, it actually is able to certify that this is a handmade product. It's not a machine-made product, and therefore you are able to get 
you, you are able to certify it as a uh, sustainable product. I mean, if you have to sell a lot of products to Europe, they want you to be able to show what's the carbon footprint. So through these technologies. So that's one of the things that we are uh, planning to do. That's one of the things to look out for. Uh, I, I think over the next uh, six months, one year, we'll be launching a series of programs to help startups which are trying to, in a way, disrupt positively the handicraft sector. Our objective is that we need to get back the handicrafts which are in the process of getting lost, either because people are moving out or there are not enough technology upgradation, design upgradation through an intervention uh, by startups. So, and, and that's something that we have already done. Uh, so, this is one of the things that uh, we are very passionate about, what Vimalji was talking about, how to integrate technology to uh, bring in a social good. Uh, so, with that, uh, thank you very much, Vicky, again for, for inviting me here. I, I hope you stay back for some of, for all of the entire day and especially for the uh, startup session that we have in the second half. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bakshi. And uh, uh, you mentioned about some startups working in the handicraft space. In uh, so, uh, Rajiv Arora ji is here. He is chairman of the Export Promotion Council. They are doing a big event on exports at Jodhpur during March. So, some sessions catering specifically to startups dealing in handicrafts or other export-oriented session would add value to the program. So, that's just just a suggestion. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, now, uh, our chief guest is also with us and our chairman is also with us. So, I would request Mr. Dhirvikram Singh Ji to, for his welcome remarks. Over to you, sir. Good morning to everybody. I'm extremely sorry for being late today. It's one of those days I just couldn't help it. So, we've already started, but I mean, let me do a welcome address Rajiv Arora ji, Chairman of the Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation. Uh, welcome sir for today's uh, session. Mr. Mehinder Kumar Parekh, Commissioner of Industries. It's always nice to have you with us sir. Dr. Manish Arora, Commissioner, Bureau of Investment Promotion, Government of Rajasthan. Ma'am, nice to have you. Pratosh, Dandaniya, Director, Software Technologies, Ajay Data Sahib, is always there with us. Chetan uh, Bakshi Ji, Partner, Incubations, Bimal Patwari Ji, thank you for coming. Mutika uh, Bhoka, Chairperson, uh, Piki Flow, participating speakers and delegates. It's indeed a pleasure and proud privilege to be amongst you all on the 7th edition of Digital Rajasthan Conclave today. Over the years, this initiative has come a long way and engaged multiple stakeholders, including government, IT and ITEs, industries, as well as startup ecosystems. So, digital innovation has been disrupting nations and industries worldwide with proliferation, automation, internet penetration, and the booming technology sector. A decade ago, digital world was just another word for information technology. Nowadays, it is hard to imagine any aspect of life being untouched by technology. In an age where innovation has become a rule, <clears throat> the value generated by digitalization has re redefined consumer expectations, transformed business operation models, and unlocked broader social benefits. Today, India has achieved sustainable success in applications of the latest technology innovations, including artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, 5G technology, augmented reality, and virtual reality, cloud, robustic digital payments, etc. Therefore, the world is looking towards India with optimistic confidence in providing affordable and sustainable technological empowerment solutions. As a nation, digital scope is immense and digital potential is unparalleled. The India's IT digital sector has played a key role in the national development story and opposed to lead India towards an additional affluent future. 
government initiatives in India initiatives have not just become crucial to the idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat, also providing strong grants to start up ecosystems in India, resulting in more and better innovations in the form of sustainable solutions and new uniforms, unicorns coming up frequently to offer solutions to the, uh, everything from health to national security. I am proud to share that Rajasthan is already moving fast to realizing the vision of digital Rajasthan and digital India as a whole. There is comprehensive governance architecture in place. We have a vast pool of talent and young people who are and who can act as change agents in realizing our shared vision of creating a developed society with technology as an enabler. The theme of the seventh edition of Rajasthan Conclave, embracing technology, transforming lives, is very appropriate when it comes to the country for a one trillion dollar digital economy over the next few years. Fiki is committed to working closely with government of Rajasthan and the government and stakeholders. So to put Rajasthan and the nation at large at a brighter spot. I'd also like to compliment Mr. Bilmut Bakwari, Chairperson, Chair of Fiki Rajasthan Subcommittee on IT and Startups for creating a platform for collaboration of stakeholders from different industries, developing a new solution for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, now, moving forward, I would request uh, Mr. Ajay Data, who is Chairman of FIKI Task Force on Multilingual Internet and Universal Acceptance and MD of Data Group of Industries. And he is an award-winning techno-commercial founder and CEO of multiple technology companies and manages oil business of family. Data Exchange Technology has received global recognition for bringing first of its kind linguistic email addresses, technology supporting emails in Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Telugu, Cyrillic, Chinese, Marathi, plus 22 more languages. He has been investing in mentoring startups and very actively contributing to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So, pleasure to have you with us, sir, and over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Fikki, for inviting me to share my thoughts here. Good morning to everyone. This is obviously a uh, very different era we live in. We live in a world where the biggest taxi wala is do not own any taxi, which is Uber. The biggest chain who has the hotel rooms do not own any hotel, is like Airbnb and, and Oyo. We have the biggest food, food owners, food deliveries, do not own any restaurant like Jamato and Swiggy. We have biggest conference hosters, are not the hotels and convention centers, are like Zoom and Zoom like of platforms. We live in an era where the things are completely changing, are never heard of. And this is what technology does. What also technology does, the world leaders, on messaging, Blackberry no more exist. The world leader in mobile phone, Nokia, do no more exist. That is what technology does when something small comes up and becomes and adopted in the world as rapid, as fierce that the biggest companies do not have time to respond. And when they respond, it is already too late. The technology is in, entering into the world and technology is creating challenges. Even for government, we may not realize we all use FaceTime, we all use WhatsApp to talk to each other. For a mere region that is out of the government eyes, nobody can listen to that talk. This is what the belief is. But the law of the country is that every voice call must be licensed, must be serviced by the telecom operator. So if you make a normal call by paying a crores of rupees license fee, you are supposed to provide an internet connection. But what does WhatsApp does to you? What does Skype does? Which license they have in the country? So mostly the innovations, so-called innovations, and I jokingly say to my startups, if your innovation is impacting the law, 
that is a good barometer that you are innovating something. If your law doesn't exist. So when Uber came in the country, that there was no taxi law for these kind of aggregators. There was no law which was there. So as the OEO, you are providing the room or make my trips or nokri.com. These all create forced government to create law to govern them. E-commerce companies. Now we are hearing now there is going to be a price policy. There is going to be a CCI entering into the system that you cannot give discounted. You can't have that Friday. Lower uh, retailers are dying. This technology disrupts everything, and law normally catches up. And it takes time. So government have no answer right now to stop these voice calls, and they are out of the ambit of listening. Create security issues. But imagine what technology does. The explicit or obscene content, illegal to browse. Illegal to host, illegal to see, runs on the every internet. No answer. So what in technology does? Technology brings challenge, brings challenges every day for the legislator and for families to govern and manage. Why it brings the power, which is enormous power, to an individual, to a child, to an adult. Why in nineteen ninety nine? I was fortunate to bring internet in Rajasthan first time. It was 33.6 kbps speed, 33.6 kbps speed to access internet at the rate of almost 60 rupees an hour. So the speed was in kbps, and the amount was 60 rupees an hour, and you could access only through telephone line, which was available on as Android telephone line. Today you have almost unlimited internet on 4G, which is expected to give you 10 MB speed internet and unlimited for the whole month at 150 rupees. Imagine where we have come. Atul has shared in his talk that I must share about the pricing. A 2 MB lease line in 1999 used to cost around a crore rupees a year. One crore 80 lakh rupees I paid. To buy a two MB lease line, and today we sell two MB lease line at seventy thousand rupees a year. That is the reason everybody has internet in his home because it is accessible, it is affordable, and it is a high speed. It is very difficult to find a person today who is not holding a smartphone and do not have access to internet. It is difficult to find. It was very difficult to find to have people phone itself. Forget about the internet when the phone was launching, and when the phone was launching, it was mostly used to give a message that somebody should talk by a missed call because the cost was thirty thirty two rupees a minute to make a call and sixty rupees to incoming. This all has changed. Technology has completely changed everything in our life. And technology will continue to change. Another example of technology impact is who has the maximum students in their universities and colleges? Answer is no. By those and an academy are the people who have the maximum students who they teach. The things are changing. I know we survey a company in Delhi. They they do ten thousand students, hundred percent remote. And no building. Imagine, and they launch it to in Corona times. How many colleges and schools we will know who have ten thousand students in two years, and they have our idea. This is what is changing our life every day. Five G will make a huge impact, and the impact which is unimaginable, unthinkable, and the applications will come. Can you imagine that somebody? Is here who can have a stethoscope and somebody in somewhere is listening your heartbeat and diagnosing your disease. These things will happen very very fast, very very soon. I have seen a medical kit which is which have these kind of things. It can be done ECG, you can do the blood sugar and uh, BP, everything remotely with your kit at home and somebody sitting somewhere, doctor 
is seeing everything live. You need not to visit a doctor. Diabolic stars, Bimal uh, was talking about, this is also going to change. Now imagine diabolic star. I jokingly say if the accident happens, boom, charan is over. Law change. So law has to catch up again. In cars, what will happen? If there is a driver, what will happen? Drones are registration. What will happen? Imagine drone is attacking somebody and killing somebody. These, these all things are technology driven. And somebody remotely sitting somewhere in the world can operate them. A car can be here, can operate. And kill somebody, beat somebody, take some illegal stuff. Everything can happen. Somebody sitting in somewhere in the world can operate that car. Same as drones. These all challenges are coming. These are very, very powerful technologies otherwise. Imagine a patient can be taken, a medical can, medicine can be taken without the driver, 48 hours continuous drive. You don't need to take rest. Drones can take, ship you the medicines sitting at your home at any, day, any point of the day. All things are happening. But what we have seen a transformation of digital India. We are we did almost 800 crore transactions on UPI. Can somebody imagine digital transactions? 800 crore transactions. We are 100, 130 crore people. 800 crore transactions in a, in a month. This is crazy adoption of the way we operate. And with central bank digital currency CBDC. We will have these notes in our pocket will be converted into the digital form. Two thousand rupees ka note, or two thousand rupees ka note, nahi rahega. Two thousand rupees ka note, aapke wallet mein, aapke digital route mein rahega. Five hundred rupees ka note, aapke digital route mein rahega. Na ki physical route mein. And then you can try, give it to anybody just like you give your physical currency. All those things are going to make a huge, huge impact. So at the end, I must say one thing to everyone: if you can take one point from here, the technology is going to make an impact. Technology will make an impact faster than you can think. And definitely in the sector you are in, do not think it is just for technology or it is just for hospital or it is just for education. No matter the sector you are, you will be impacted faster than you think. And sooner it is going to be than what we can imagine here. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Data. And uh, rightly said, the technology will has, we will see an accelerated adoption of technology in times to come. Now, moving forward, I would request Mr. Paritosh Dandriya, Director of Software Technology Parks of India. Uh, he is uh, Director STPI Gurgaon Jurisdiction, joined STPI as a Director in Headquarters in 2016. And as director of STPI, he has looked after various technical verticals provided by STPI to the IT industry like planning, setting up and functioning of STPI data centers at various locations, provisioning for data comm services and functioning of STPI as class A ISP, creation of IT grade infrastructure for STPI and incubation services for entrepreneurs and has been the CISO of STPI. Just one request that we are running slightly delayed, so keep the address brief and crisp. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, good morning everyone, uh, dignitaries on the dais. Uh, it's a pleasure being here in uh, Jaipur, Rajasthan for this event. I have come from Gurga and I look after the states of uh, JNK, Himachal, Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan. A brief introduction about what STPI is because I won't be talking much about the theme because uh, the earlier speakers have uh, elaborated in detail about that and most of us are aware about of what is technology and how is it transforming our lives. So Software Technology Parks of India was established in 1993. Basic aim was to promote uh, export of software from India and for that providing all the necessary support to the IT industry. At that time, IT industry was in its nascent stage and uh, for that, STPI became a single body for providing various strategy compliances. STPI also was one of the first few internet service providers. Uh, we were a class A ISP. Because at that point of time, 
there were not too many private bodies who were uh, you know, internet service providers and uh, there was a crying need for the industry because they needed internet services for all their you know, software activities and from export all those activities. As of now, uh, we have 63 centers span India and uh, barring eight, most of them are in tier 2, tier 3 cities. The idea is to promote IT industry in the tier 2, tier 3 cities so that our youth, our uh, entrepreneurs in those cities are able to you know, do something for themselves, themselves without moving to bigger cities and as you must have realized during this pandemic times most of the people uh, returned uh, back to their hometowns and worked from there and the way technology helped them. So the idea basically now is that have more uh, people working from uh, tier 2 tier 3 cities so that those cities also develop you know, technologically and economically. Uh, to this effect, uh, what STPI does is, we have now embarked on a mission of, we have opened Center of Entrepreneurship, which we also call Center of Excellences, in uh, various cutting edge technologies which are, you know, uh, latest, which are happening. We have COEs in Artificial Intelligence, we have COEs on FinTech, we have COEs on Blockchain Technology. And in these uh, COEs, uh, we provide uh, startups uh, various supports in terms of uh, uh, whether incubation program, their technology mentoring, and also uh, try to get them some funding so that they are able to promote and take their business from one level to the next level. In this context, we also have our uh, government has a scheme called Next Generation Incubation Scheme in which various startups from Pan-India. This NGI scheme is basically targeted to the startups in tier 2 TSC cities where these startups once selected uh, and if uh, they are found suitable they get uh, various uh, uh, mentoring sessions and uh, as well as they are also provided some seed fund so that they can take their business to the next level. The other activities recently which we had done was uh, in concern, uh, concerns uh, along with the Electronic and uh, Computers and Software Promotion, Export Promotion Council. Uh, there were events conducted all over India in various places. One of them was in uh, Rajasthan also. The idea was to select 100 startups and enable them, take them to the United States of America to uh, showcase their product. And I am very happy to state that out of the 133 of start the startups from STPI and four of them happened to be from Jaipur. So, uh, what I want to say, I won't be talking much about this technology transformation, now what I want to say is that we are here as uh, part of central government, government of India, to support the startup activities and promotion of the IT industry. And uh, this can happen only when the industry, the stakeholders, that is uh, the startups, and what I see is the younger generation we have you know, who contribute towards all this in a positive manner. And uh, luckily, uh, Rajasthan is blessed with uh, top class infrastructure and uh, academic institutions who can provide the right kind of material for them uh, to uh, do good work in the IT industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Kanvi. Rightly said that we have a good talent pool of people who can uh, usher in the next wave of entrepreneurship uh, through the startup movement. And moving forward, our next speaker is Dr. Manisha Aruda. She is Commissioner of Bureau of Investment Promotion, Government of Rajasthan. And besides that, she is also Managing Director of Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation and CMD of Rajasthan Handloom Development Corporation. And then she is a very uh, rich and varied experience with various departments and field level positions of government of Rajasthan. So we welcome you ma'am, over to you.
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन ऑन टू द चीफ गेस्ट श्री राजीव अरोड़ा जी चेयरमैन राजस्थान स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज कॉर्पोरेशन एंड आल्सो चेयरमैन राजस्थान एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन काउंसिल द डिटूटरीज ऑन द डाइस एंड द ऑगस्ट ऑडियंस इट इज एन एब्सोल्यूट प्लेजर एंड ऑनर फॉर मी टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस ब्रिलियंट कॉन्क्लेव एंड आई थैंक सिकी एंड स्पेशली अतुल जी फॉर मेकिंग मी अ पार्ट ऑफ इट as commissioner bureau of investment promotion i will uh, take you through a very short presentation regarding the digital initiatives of bip i will also take this opportunity in sharing with you that very recently government of rajasthan had organized an invest rajasthan summit 2022 and in the summit and the road shows that preceded the summit we entered into mous and lois with the investors in a big number that is uh, 4192 to the tune of investment of more than 10 lakh crores and i am happy to share with you that nearly 49% of these have already been converted on ground a bureau of investment promotion is the nodal department of government of rajasthan for uh, taking up investments and uh, for inviting the small and big entrepreneurs across the globe for coming and investing in the state of Rajasthan in the digital journey of bureau of investment promotions we have three major milestones uh, we started with the single window clearance system in 2011 and ours was the first state one of the first states that came up with a single window act in the country in june 2016 this single window uh, clearance system was further uh, enhanced and improved and uh, there was some change in the rules and the ambit was increased in the earlier single window system the investment that uh, was allowed was 10 crores and when in 2016 we came up with the advanced single window clearance system the investment uh, was allowed uh, the ambit was increased and from 1 crore onwards Uh, we allowed the applicants uh, to come on the digital platform uh, not many uh, changes otherwise but a few more departments were also added in 2016 to cover a few more services the salient features of this uh, single window clearance system that came up in 2016 uh, we provided a single point of contact for the investors to obtain all type of clearances and registrations and approvals on this portal every applicant was given a unique business registration number for all his units then the online submission of application the payment and tracking of applications without any physical uh, touch with any of the officers was facilitated 140 types of approvals were put on this online platform across 15 departments of the government that, that were integrated with the single window clearance system and providing the services through a single sign on that is the sso id through sso id you could log in uh, to this portal and on this technology via the single window system one could access the status of his application there was a dynamic common application form available the digitally signed certificates were generated and the applicant was time to time informed through sms and the email alerts at each step Uh, about the status of this application the online grievance redressal system and the help desk were also in place in the single window clearance system in 2016 then we further enhanced the system and we put a cap of 10 crore which was earlier not there from 1 crore to 10 crore now the single window clearance uh, system uh, operated and the upper cap was put because uh, very uh, soon we came with a one stop shop of uh, the clearance of the applications through our rajnivesh portal which is a very significant digital initiative of for the uh, investors 
uh, after strengthening the single window system, this one-stop shop uh, was introduced with uh, an amendment in the earlier act. That is, uh, we came up with a Rajasthan Enterprises Single Window Enabling and Clearance Amendment Act 2020. Uh, in this, uh, Board of Investment under the chairmanship of Honorable Chief Minister Rajasthan was constituted for uh, final approval of the uh, applications that would get benefits under the various schemes and policies of government. Then some notifications came in the forms of rules in 2020 and now we have in place Rajnivesh portal with the domain rajnivesh.rajasthan.gov.in. This is one-stop shop for applying in all sectors that uh, they wish to, uh, the um, entrepreneurs come and wish to invest in the state. So uh, we have done away with uh, going for the investor. He doesn't have now to go to many departments. Uh, we have fo uh, rooms for 14 departments in the premises of Bureau of Investment Promotions where officers of 14 departments come uh, every Monday and Thursday and they meet uh, with the officers and if some investor wants to come, he can also come and uh, discuss his uh, problems if uh, he is facing in any of the approvals in any departments. And also share with you that uh, the Honorable Industries Minister comes every uh, first Thursday of the month and discusses the pendency of the uh, applications on this Rajnivesh portal along with the uh, officers of 14 departments. So this is how we have uh, facilitated and uh, the clearance of uh, the applications that come for investment in the state. Uh, this is a definite step towards ease of doing business in the state. One Stop Shop provides comprehensive and hassle-free assistance as I just said to the investor under one roof. There are time-bound clearances and approvals the process of application is very easy. Uh, above 10 crores, the one-stop shop operates. Policy formulation, resolution of interdepartmental issues and approval of customized package of benefits is provided to the investors, to the prospective investors. As I said, Board of Investment under the chairmanship of Honorable Chief Minister is there for expediting the issues. Single portal interface across multiple departments to obtain uh, clearances, simplified application, filling with fully, uh, fully automated and speedy delivery of services, then uh, time bound clearance and then approval digitally, signed uh, certificates are generated, then query, feedback, and grievance redressal mechanism is in place. 135 types of approvals and clearances and NOCs are provided under the ambit of one stop shop covering 14 departments of the state. The registration process at OSS, that is the Rajni based portal, is very simple. Uh, this is being projected elsewhere also, right? Okay, see, the, uh, first the investor has to just identify the services and types of approvals he wants to seek from the government. He has to register himself at the OSS. The application for service and approval form is in place there. Then his application is processed and sent to the respective department on the online mode. Then there is uh, pending investor actions as I said. It's a, there is a constant uh, monitoring process. Pending department actions, uh, final investor updates and then tracking of the applications and the grievance and uh, redressal feedback is also given to the applicant. Ever since the one-stop shop came in 2020, uh, the number of applications that were received and disposed is more than 50%. Then the third uh, good initiative of uh, Bureau of Investment Promotion is for the MSMEs, that is micro, small and medium enterprises. And for this also, Rajasthan was one of the first states in the country to have brought out an MSME Act in 2019. And uh, this act is being operated on the rajudyogmitra.rajasthan.gov.in that is Rajudyogmitra portal. Uh, 
Uh, as all of you, many of you might already be knowing that micro enterprises are those enterprises where the net investment in planting machinery comes out. Uh, it starts from uh, uh, zero to up to one crore, and the net turnover is less than five crores. Then, under the small enterprises, we cover uh, cover those units uh, from in where uh, the, in which the investment in planting machinery is from one crore to five crores, and the net turnover comes from five crores to fifty crores. Then, the medium enterprises, we have the net investment in planting machinery from 10 crores to 50 crores and the net turnover from 200 from 50 to 250 crores. Rajasthan, as I said, is the first to enact a law uh, for exemption from approvals and inspections for smooth establishments of the MSMEs. We came up with an ordinance in 2019 and the operational rules under this ordinance came in May 2019. The Rajudyo Mitra portal was launched in 2019 and the MSME Act came in 2019 itself. How does this Rajudyo Mitra portal operate? I will very briefly summarize. Uh, when any applicant applies on it, he uh, gives a declaration of intent electronically on the portal and uh, we have done away with the process of a cumbersome process of the applicant filling many types of forms for applying for any uh, concessions in the uh, government for any uh, type co being covered under any of the investment policies. So when he uh, gives a declaration of content, automatically an acknowledgement certificate is issued electronically to the applicant by the state level nodal agency that is the BIP. So it actually takes less than five minutes. Yes, it is auto generation and the moment uh, you submit the declaration of intent, automatically uh, a certificate is uh, generated which declares that you are an MSME and for the next three years you are exempted from filling up any forms for and taking up any approvals from any of our departments, be it UDH, be it pollution control board or be it uh, LSG or any of the departments which uh, may be cover, uh, take, uh, required for uh, permissions uh, under the sector you will be setting up your uh, unit. So this three years is a big period for giving you the breathing place, uh, space and for giving you time to completely establish yourself and in the recent budget announcement I am happy to share that this period of three years has been extended to a period of five years. And above all, above even above this uh, period of three years, enterprises have to obtain required approvals in six months from the date of expiry of this acknowledgement certificate. So currently that makes it three plus three years plus six months, and in the coming years it will be five years plus six months, which is actually a very big period, and uh, none uh, no other state in the country is giving such benefit and concessions to the prospective investors. The online portal, Rajudyog Mental, the form, uh, application form is very simple. There is no application fee also. No documents are required to be uploaded. The application process is very easy and as the Commissioner Industries also said, it is immature acknowledgement certificate is issued. Sir, uh, ever since this Rajudyog uh, portal was launched, uh, we have around 16,000 applications in uh, medium, micro and small enterprises as you can see in the pie chart also. And before me, the eminent speakers uh, who addressed the audience have very extensively and in specific perspectives also covered the need for the digital literacy and the amazing digital and technology revolution that the country and the state are uh, see, witnessing day in and day out. But certainly, as all of them uh, so far have indicated that there are implications, there are challenges, uh, there are pluses and minuses, you know, there are both sides of the coin. Technology could be dangerous also if we do not use it intelligently. Much has talked about, been talked about by Mr. Patwari about the artificial intelligence also. 
So uh, I'm sure that the, the audience and all of us here will benefit out of this uh, brilliant initiative of FIKI of the seventh digital, uh, holding the seventh digital conclave. I once again thank you all for giving me the opportunity to share some of the initiatives that have been taken up in the digital journey of the end. Thank you. Thank you, thank you ma'am. And uh, thank you for sharing the digital initiatives of VIP, which are definitely a great help for the investors. And in fact, Rajasthan has been a trendsetter in adopting digital technologies. People don't relate so much with technology in Rajasthan, but if we look at governance, I think we are far ahead in many more states in India in terms of implementation of technology in governance. And uh, many of our schemes have basically been adopted in different names by other states, even by the Indian government. And that is one thing we can be proud of. Uh, and the way we have adapted ourselves, especially during the pandemic, sir, you were witness, we have done a lot of sessions, interactions to deal with the aftermath of the pandemic using technology. So keep things going. So moving forward, we have our next speaker, Mr. Mahendra Kumar Farooq, who is Commissioner of Industries and Commerce, 2010 batch IS officer. And he is uh, Industries, Commerce and uh, CSR Commissioner and has got a rich and varied experience of working with the Government of Rajasthan in the Department of Home, Rural and Development, Panchayati Raj, NHRM, IGPS, Commercial Taxes and various field level positions. Welcome, sir. Chief Guest Rajiv Prasad, Manisha Atulji, Randhir Vikram Singh Ji, Vinod Patanri Ji, Chintan Bakshi Ji, Ajay Rata Ji, Nandriya Ji, and ladies and gentlemen. You have heard of it, right? Nothing is better than the change. और चेंज सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावी और तेज गति से अगर कहीं दिखाई देता है तो वो है डिजिटल साइड आईटी के क्षेत्र में जो मेरी उम्र के लोग हैं उन्होंने तो जो चेंज दिया है अगर आपको सुनाया है तो शायद यकीन नहीं होगा एक बार जमाना था जिस समय घर वाले टेलीफोन नहीं होते और जिसके घर में टेलीफोन होता था वो तो बहुत इस तरह से जाना जाता था कि ये समाज का एक बहुत बड़े तबके से आता है पीपी नंबर में शेयर किया करते थे हमारे जो कार्ड होता था उसमें लिखते थे टेलीफोन किसी पड़ोसी का या आसपास कुछ नहीं है उसके नंबर देते थे और कम्युनिकेट कैसे करते थे ऐसे डायरेक्ट हुआ के और एक बार नहीं लगता तो शायद दस बार डायरेक्ट करते थे आज इस समय अगर हम इस हॉल को देखें तो इतनी सारी इंफॉर्मेशन इस क्लाउड में विद्यमान होगी जो आपके जो गैजेट्स हैं आपके सभी के पास में होगा आई डोंट थिंक किसी एक आध पर मिस कर गया होगा भूल गया होगा तो हर एक के पास और ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग लाइफ की बात जब हम करते हैं तो इसने हमारा जीवन इतना बदल दिया है कि शायद हम में से कुछ लोग पैसे भी होंगे जो शायद बाथरूम में भी ये विद्यमान रहता है नहीं तो तभी मुझे नाम तक भी कहते हैं कि अरे बहुत आया है बहुत आजम के बाद। So to that extent, the lives have become very very comfortable these days because of the technology. There's no doubt about that. This is probably the time when we have almost every kind of humanity. Physical side से अगर देखेंगे तो this is the most comfortable time. आज से पैंतीस चालीस साल पहले अगर सोचते हैं तो ये पॉसिबल लगता नहीं जिस समय इंटरनेट सर्विसेज का इजाद हुआ उस समय नोकिया और एक एक आध कंपनी और हुआ करती थी और वो बड़े बड़े फोन जो होते थे उनसे हम कम्युनिकेट करते हैं हमारे हाथ में किसी के पास लगता तो ऐसे लगता था कि आदमी के पास बहुत बड़ी सुविधा है उससे पहले जब हम 
एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में आए थे तो हमारे पास में गाड़ी में वायरलेस सेट हुआ करते थे और बड़े आराम से उसमें इको चार्ली इससे से बात करके कम्युनिकेट करते थे और हमें लगता था कि हमारे पास बहुत जबरदस्त सुविधा है पर आज ये सुविधा हर एक के पास में और वर्ल्ड के किसी कोने में बैठा हुआ व्यक्ति कहीं से भी कम्युनिकेट कर सकता है और टेक्नोलॉजी का एडेप्शन इतना अच्छा हो है कि लोगों के घरों में जो एल्डरली पर्सन है तो मेरी मदर मोर देन वो भी मोबाइल पे आराम से बहुत सी चीजें सरफेस देख पाती है कम्युनिकेट कर लेती है वीडियो कॉल कर लेती है तो हमने अडॉप्ट किया तो ये अडॉप्शन इस बात को बताता है कि एंटरप्रीनोर्स में ये अडॉप्शन और अधिक फास्ट हमें करना पड़ेगा और जिन्होंने चेंज किया है उन्होंने तरक्की में बहुत जल्दी से की है जब बात करते हैं डिजिटल राजस्थान की इस डिजिटल वर्ल्ड में फिर हम डिजिटल इंडिया की बात करते हैं और फिर आज डिजिटल राजस्थान की बात करते हैं तो राजस्थान में हैं ऐसे एंटरप्रीनोर्स जिन्होंने बहुत तेज गति से टेक्नोलॉजी को अडॉप्ट किया और उससे उनकी जो फंक्शनिंग है उसमें बहुत जबरदस्त इंप्रूवमेंट और करना ही पड़ेगा ऐसे हमारे पास चारा नहीं है बड़ा पीछे रहे डाटा भी तो बहुत कई सालों से मतलब बीस पच्चीस साल पहले भी हम लोग आपस में इंटरेक्ट करते थे वेबसाइट बनाने के बाद जो समय सोते थे शायद नई चीज लगती थी तो उस जमाने में हमने कोई वेबसाइट बनाई थी दोनों में मिलकर दो हजार की बात है भारत में कितने क्राफ्ट उसके बारे में हमने कुछ बहुत अलग अलग जाके जगहों पे जाके और प्रोडक्ट्स को कैटलॉग करके और एक वेबसाइट बनाई थी तो और वहां से आज का समय देखे तो तो गांव का बच्चा है वो भी आराम से अपना वीडियो बनाता है और यूट्यूब पे अपलोड करता है और इस देश में अस्सी करोड़ लोग अगर इंटरनेट यूजर से आप सोच सकते हैं भारत तो सबसे बड़ा बेसिकली देखा जाए तो बहुत बड़ा मार्केट है वर्ल्ड ने तो पहचान लिया था और इसीलिए यहां बहुत सारे प्रोडक्ट्स प्लथर ऑफ कंपनीज यहां पे आए समय आप हमने रियलाइज करना शुरू किया कि हम आत्मनिर्भरता की तरफ बढ़े मैं छह सात साल पहले जापान में एक प्रोग्राम में गया था और उस दिन किसी स्टोर पर गया तो उसमें मुझे बड़ा आश्चर्य हुआ कि उस जापान की स्टोर में स्टेशनरी और इस तरह की चीजों के रिलेटेड स्टोर था सेवेंटी एट परसेंट प्रोडक्ट चाइनीज मेड इन चाइना तो चाइना ने ये कैसे अडॉप्ट कर लिया वो टेक्नोलॉजी मुझे लगता है स्मेल करते हैं और उसको अडॉप्ट करते हैं और ध्रुव गति से पूरे देश में अलग अलग जगह पे वो स्पेशलाइज करते हैं छोटे छोटे गांव में नई टेक्नोलॉजी आई और उसको अडॉप्ट किया और उसका प्रोडक्शन मास्क स्केल में करना शुरू किया और फिर पूरे विश्व में वो प्रोडक्ट्स चले जाते ये समय है जिस समय हर आदमी सोचता है कि हर देश सोचता है कि हम आत्मनिर्भर बने और हमारे पास में ब्रेन की कमी नहीं है हमारा टैलेंट पूरे विश्व में सब जगह हमारे जो आईटी पर्सन है वो भी अपनी सर्विसेज दे रहे तो पर्सनैल की कमी नहीं है टेक्नोलॉजी आज की डेट में भारत में सब आ चुकी है लोगों ने यहां आकर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करना शुरू किया है और राजस्थान जैसे कि मनीषा बता रही थी इन्वेस्ट इंडिया में इतने सारे प्रोग्रेस आना ये क्या इंडिकेट करता है राजस्थान इज डेफिनेटली अ प्रोमिनेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट डेस्टिनेशन दिस इज नॉट अबाउट दैट पीसफुल स्टेट है अच्छे कल्चर है रिच हेरिटेज है उसके बाद जगह भी नहीं देखें तो बहुत सब तरह से ये सुविधा युक्त इस राज्य है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट करने के लिए लोग आ रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट की जो स्कीम्स है दूसरे स्टेट से कंपेयर कर रहे क्योंकि गुड सोच समझ के इन स्केल्स को बनाया गया इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रमोशन के लिए जो योजनाएं हैं वो बहुत अच्छी और आपको ये जानकर आश्चर्य होगा कि राजस्थान में जो डिजिटल बैंक है हम लोग शोकेस तो नहीं कर पा रहे लेकिन गवर्नमेंट की जो फंक्शनिंग में डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग हुआ है दट इज टमेंडस पिछले 
आठ दस सालों में राजस्थान ने इस क्षेत्र में बहुत जबरदस्त प्रगति की है आपको ये जानकर आश्चर्य होगा घर बैठे आप राजस्थान की किसी भी भूमि के टुकड़े का पूरा इतिहास जान सकते हैं कौन उसका ऑनर है क्या साइज है किसके नाम से किसके नाम से पहले रहा था और लगभग आधा प्रदेश अभी डिजिटल इस तरह से हो गया कि वहां आप खड़े होकर अपने मोबाइल से चेक कर सकते हैं कि जमीन किसके नाम से और दो तीन तहसील बची है पूरी सारी तहसीलों का रिकॉर्ड ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन रजिस्ट्री होती है सारे फॉर्म ऑनलाइन अवेलेबल है जो रजिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट अपनी स्कीम्स इंप्लीमेंट करते हैं सारे फॉर्म ऑनलाइन है अभी जो मनीषा एक्नोलॉजमेंट सर्टिफिकेट की बात कर रही थी कोई भी व्यक्ति सोचता है आज उठता है कि कोई उद्यम के अलग नाम से अपनी कंपनी का नाम सोचे नहीं तो अपने ही नाम से प्रोवाइडर्स के फॉर्म बना ले और उसको उस फॉर्म के नाम से इस उद्योग मित्र डॉक्टर स्थान डॉट जीवी डॉट इन वाले पोर्टल पर जाके अगर वो फॉर्म भरता है हमारे प्रदेश की चीफ सेक्रेटरी ने कहा मैं नहीं बिलीव करती पांच छह मिनट में कैसे भर सकता मैं भर के देखना चाहता हूँ श्री जी हाँ सर इट टू सिक्स मिनट्स छठवें मिनट में एक्नोलॉजमेंट सर्टिफिकेट उनके नाम का जनरेट उनके साथ में आ गया दैट इज द पावर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी राजस्थान इज लीडिंग इन अडॉप्शन ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी आई कैन से विद कॉन्फिडेंस कि राजस्थान पूरे देश में अगर अदर स्टेट्स की तुलना में आप देखेंगे फास्ट फॉर रहेगा हम लोग छोटी सी योजना भी लॉन्च की थी एम एन बी एस पर मुख्यमंत्री लघु वाणिज्यिक वाहन स्वरोजगार आपको आश्चर्य होगा बीस दिन में हमने वेबसाइट बनाई लॉन्च किया चौतीस सौ लोगों का उसमें टारगेट था अट्ठाईस दिन में पूरी एप्लीकेशन कंप्लीट हो गई गवर्नमेंट उसमें सब्सिडी देती है साठ हजार की साठ हजार कंपनी वाला आपकी तरफ से डिस्काउंट देता है डिजिटली हर योजना के आपका आवेदन भरने की सुविधा है रिप्स पे मुख्यमंत्री लघु उद्योग प्रोत्साहन योजना पे रिप्स में इस बार में रिप्स बाईस बनी है आप उसको बहुत पढ़ेंगे तो ये पूरे देश में अपनी तरह के अनुठी इतने अच्छे इन्वेस्टमेंट इंसेंटिव से पचास करोड़ से अधिक के जितने बड़े प्रपोजल उनके लिए तीनों तरह के इंसेंटिव है असल क्रिएशन इंसेंटिव है पेट्रोल सब्सिडी है और अगर आप एस एस सी का रिफंड नहीं लेना चाहते आपको लागू नहीं होता है तो आप उसमें टर्नओवर से लिंक करते हुए इंसेंटिव ले सकते हैं एंड इंसेंटिव की जो रेंज है वो भी काफी अच्छी है थर्टी परसेंट से लेके ट्वेंटी परसेंट तक और अगर आप एक एडिशनल इंसेंटिव पूरे प्रदेश में तीन भवन बांटा गया है बैकवर्ड जो तहसील है उनमें उनको सेपरेटली कैटेगराइज किया है जो डेवलपिंग ब्लॉक्स है उनको सेपरेटली और जो डेवलप्ड है उनमें भी कभी जो इंसेंटिव है आपके थर्टी परसेंट से स्टार्ट पचास तो से नीचे के जो एस एम ई सेक्टर के हैं उन सब के लिए पूरा एक उसको एक अलग से चर्च सेक्टर के रूप में लिया गया आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट कितना भी पहले तो एक हाई दो करोड़ से कम इन्वेस्टमेंट वाले रिक्स में नहीं आता है आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट कुछ भी है आप उस पर बेनिफिट्स ले सकते हैं स्टैंडर्ड की छूट मिलती है आपको लैंड टैक्स की छूट मिलती है कन्वर्जन चार्जेस फ्री है इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ड्यूटी छूट फ्री है मनी टैक्स की छूट मिलती है एंड अपार्ट दैट मैं आपको फिर से पूरे कॉन्फिडेंस के साथ कह रहा हूं कि इस स्कीम के पैदल आपको पूरे देश में योजना नहीं मिलेगी एमएसएमई को इंटरेस्ट सब्वेंशन एक करोड़ से अधिक इन्वेस्टमेंट पे इस पर प्रावधान किया गया है प्लांट एंड मशीनरी में आपका जो भी इन्वेस्टमेंट जाता है एक करोड़ से लेके पचास लाख तक पे सब पे इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी का प्रावधान किया गया है सिक्स परसेंट ऑन रोडेज वन करोड़ टू डेढ़ करोड़ दस करोड़ से ऊपर का है तो सॉरी एक करोड़ से पांच करोड़ तक छह परसेंट पांच करोड़ से दस परसेंट तक दस करोड़ तक चार परसेंट और दस से पचास तक तीन परसेंट और ये टेलीस्कोप है तो एक दस करोड़ के इन्वेस्टमेंट वाले को लगभग उसको पचास लाख की इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी मिलती है कैप भी इस तरह से बनाया गया है कि पचास करोड़ तक वाले को पूरी इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी मिल जाए फिर से कहता हूं इसके पैरल स्कीम नहीं है जिसको इन्वेस्टमेंट करने का मन है तुरंत मान रहा है और 
एक्नोलेजमेंट सर्टिफिकेट ले रहा था चालू करें क्यों क्यों बोला है एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप के हमारे में कमी नहीं है प्रदेश को एक बार बढ़ाना है तो इस डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पर मंत्री के एंड में आपको कल शाम को इकट्ठे होके मैं यही बात मैं पढ़ा रहा हूँ इसी कह रहा था कि गिव सम सजेशंस कि कैसे हमारे जयपुर में हमारे बड़ी अर्बन सिटीज हैं जोधपुर उदयपुर ये आईटी के एट्रैक्टिव सेंटर्स बन सके बेंगलोर पुना हैदराबाद ये भी किसी समय इसी तरह से आईटी के पर्सनल में कुछ कुछ वहां चीजें रही होगी जिसकी वजह से वहां एक साथ आए टिपिंग पॉइंट जैसे ही छूट जाएगा ये भी मिल जाएगा तो टिपिंग पॉइंट यहां पर भी लेके आई है तब हमें लगेगा कि ये एनकेव आयोजित करना हमारे लिए काफी सार्थक हुआ बहुत अच्छा इनिशिएटिव है आई कंग्रेचुलेट फिक्की टू कम फॉरवर्ड विद दिस ब्यूटीफुल टॉपिक डिजिटल राजस्थान मंडले और सिविल एडिशन आप कर रहे हैं आपका ये आयोजन सफल हो मेरी शुभकामनाएं आपने मुझे इस समय इस कंक्लेव का हिस्सा बनने के लिए आमंत्रित किया उसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और पुनः आपके इसके कंक्लेव के सफल आयोजन के लिए अपनी तरफ से शुभकामनाएं प्रेषित करते हुए बात समाप्त करता हूँ धन्यवाद Thank you, sir, and thank you for sharing the uh, lucrative policies for investors uh, in the IT space. And uh, now we would request our chief guest of the day, Mr. Rajiv Arora. He is chairman of Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation. He is also chairman of the recently constituted Rajasthan Export Promotion Council, and he has been previously chairman of uh, RTBC Hotels Corporation and also vice chairman of Rajasthan Foundation. He is. And also an entrepreneur and successful uh, political leader from Rajasthan, he is a founder of Amro Valley Jewels and has been awarded Leaders of Tomorrow Award by ET Now. So honored to have you, Amansa sir. Welcome. So, सबसे पहले तो नए साल की शुभकामनाएं आप सबको Happy New Year और मैं फिक्की के संग लंबे समय से जुड़ा हूँ कई कार्यक्रमों में आता हूँ. और मेरे बड़े अच्छे मित्र हैं रणधीर विक्रम सिंह अभी नए चेयरपर्सन बने हैं उसके लिए आपको ठाकुर रणधीर विक्रम सिंह जी को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं महेंद्र कुमार पारक जी कमिश्नर इंडस्ट्रीज अभी आप उनका उद्बोधन सुन रहे थे डॉक्टर मनीषा अरोड़ा आई जो ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रमोशन और राशि को की एम हैं अजय डाटा जी मेरे दोस्त और लंबे समय से मेरे साथ जयपुर सिटी से फोरम हमारा एक इनिशिएटिव है उसमें हम साथ साथ काम करते हैं परितोष दलियाल जी विमल पटवारी जी मुंशीका धोखा जी चेतन बख्शी जी अतुल शर्मा जी नरेंद्र जैन जी भी चले गए मेरे से उपस्थित सभी महानुभावों बुजुर्गों माता बहनों दोस्तों बहुत अच्छा एक कार्यक्रम डिजिटल कॉन्क्लेव फिक्की का इनिशिएटिव है सातवां दो हजार सोलह में शुरू हुआ था और बीच में आपको मालूम है कोरोना का समय आया पैंडेमिक था पैंडेमिक के अंदर भी फिक्की राजस्थान में गिफ्ट सेशन करे मैंने भी बहुत सेशन अटेंड करे और ये नॉलेज का आदान प्रदान होना चाहिए वो होता रहा और हम सब लोगों ने बड़े डिफिकल्ट टाइम से उस वक्त निकले लेकिन आप कल्पना करें कि अगर ये डिजिटल रिवोल्यूशन पूरी दुनिया में नहीं हुआ होता तो ये दो तीन साल कैसे निकले होते क्योंकि डिजिटल रिवोल्यूशन था तब भी हम पूरी दुनिया में टेक्नोलॉजी में क्या वगैरह है ये वाहन वायरस के बारे में डब्ल्यू क्या सोचता है क्या प्रिकॉशन लेने चाहिए एम एस को क्या तकलीफ है टूरिज्म कैसे अफेक्ट हुआ है इकोनॉमी कैसे पीछे जा रही है उसको कैसे ऊपर करा जाए कोई भी जो सूचना कोई भी चेतावनी कोई भी प्रिकॉशंस कोई भी किसी की एडवाइस एक मिनट के अंदर पूरे देश में पूरी दुनिया में पहुंचा है उसका कितना बड़ा लाभ भी हुआ है और तभी जो पहले कभी महामारी होती थी उसके मुकाबले ये महामारी ज्यादा घातक होते हुए भी एक किस्म से उस पर नियंत्रण आ सका 
क्योंकि पूरी दुनिया डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन की ओर चल रही थी और हम सबको मालूम है कि जो भी टेक्नोलॉजी आती है जो भी डिजिटलाइजेशन होता है उसका सबसे बड़ा जो इम्पैक्ट होता है वो सोशल इकोनॉमिक परफॉर्मेंस में होता है उस राज्य की सोशल इकोनॉमिक परफॉर्मेंस में होता है उस देश की सोशल इकोनॉमिक परफॉर्मेंस में होता है और इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ तो डिजिटलाइजेशन के साथ जुड़ी हुई है और अच्छी बात यह है कि फिक्की जो इंडियन चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स और इंडस्ट्री है वो समय समय पर लोगों को सेंसिटाइज करता है अवेयर करता है जो लोग स्टार्टअप में काम कर रहे हैं जो इस टेक्नोलॉजी की फील्ड में काम कर रहे हैं कोई जगह पे लेके आता है दिल्ली से इतना इम्पोर्टेंट पहले यहाँ पे अभी आया है अभी जिन्होंने अपने भाषण दिए अपनी बात आपने तक पहुँचाई वो रेयर अपॉर्चुनिटी है जयपुर के लोगों के लिए राजस्थान के लोगों के लिए और दिन भर भी ये सिलसिला चलता रहेगा मैं पढ़ रहा था कहीं पर कि जब वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम में बातचीत हुई कि अगर किसी कंट्री में टेन परसेंट डिजिटलाइजेशन बढ़ता है तो उससे उसकी जी डी पे जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव परसेंट का असर होता है जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव परसेंट का ग्रोथ अगर किसी इकोनॉमी में किसी जी डी पी पे होता है तो आप समझ सकते हैं उसका कितना बड़ा लाभ उस देश के सिटीजन को हमेशा मिलता है और ये जो सिलसिला है हिंदुस्तान में हम याद करें तो देश के प्रधानमंत्री थे पूर्व प्रधानमंत्री राजीव गांधी वो बोलते थे कि इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी के भारत की कल्पना करते थे तब किसी ने सोचा नहीं था कि वो इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी के किस भारत की कल्पना करते हैं वो कंप्यूटर की बात करते थे डिजिटलाइजेशन की बात करते थे और पिछले दो शताब्दी में ये सेंचुरी की बात से हम देख रहे हैं कि क्षेत्र में बहुत जबरदस्त प्रगति हुई है अभी मुझसे पूर्व वक्ता थे अजय काका और सब साथी बता रहे थे कि किस तरीके से पूरे देश में हम कहां से कहां पहुंच गए महिला भारत के उदाहरण दिया कम्युनिकेशन का क्या उदाहरण होता था आज हमारे हाथ में मैं भी बैठे हुए देख रहा था पालक साहब यहीं से फाइलें क्लियर कर रहे थे मोबाइल नंबर से ये राजकाज का पोर्टल आ गया राजस्थान के अंदर अब हमारे पास फिजिकल फाइल्स कम से कम आती है अधिकारियों के पास रोज अपलोड होती है उसके ऊपर उसके ऊपर आप क्लियर कर दो इमीजिएटली हाथ आप भेज दो ये कोई क्राइटेरिया नहीं कि आप ऑफिस पहुंचे नहीं फाइल देखी नहीं और फाइल पढ़ के आप साइन करना है वहीं से कर सकते हो कितना बड़ा टेक्नोलॉजिकल चेंज है और डिजिटल इंडिया की शुरुआत दो से जब से हुई है उसकी इमीजिएट बात फिक्की ने दो हजार सोलह के अंदर इनिशिएटिव भी लिया कि हम डिजिटल राजस्थान जैसा प्रोग्राम करेंगे मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूँ कि राजस्थान के जो मुख्यमंत्री हैं अशोक गहलोत जी उनकी सोच बड़ी हमेशा दुर्गा भी रही है उन्होंने हमेशा से स्टार्टअप के ऊपर और सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात हमेशा कहते थे कि नॉलेज इज पार और इस वजह से जैसे अभी कहा गया है कि पुणे में हैदराबाद के अंदर बैंगलोर के अंदर क्यों इस तरीके की क्रांति हुई कि वहां पे ज्यादातर आई टी कंपनी चली गई क्योंकि यहाँ पे मैं और जो रिसोर्सेस जो थे वो मिलते नहीं थे और आज पिछले तीसरे कार्यकाल के बाद में अशोक गहलोत जी के प्रदेश में पिचासी विश्वविद्यालय राजस्थान के अंदर एटी फाइव यूनिवर्सिटीज तो कितना कैलेक्ट निकल जाता है इंजीनियरिंग ग्रेजुएट्स का आई टी प्रोफेशनल्स का तो निश्चित रूप से आने वाले समय में ये जो दस लाख करोड़ के इन्वेस्ट राजस्थान में आए हैं ये सौ लाख करोड़ बन सकते हैं अगर इसमें से आई बी दो या तीन या चार कंपनी कोई इन्फोसिस या टीसी महिंद्रा की तरह इनमें से कोई भी एक स्टार्टअप भी पूरी दुनिया के अंदर चेंज नहीं कर सकता और कितना बड़ा काम हो सकता है मैं कल पढ़ रहा था कि अजय का पंद्रह लाख करोड़ रुपए बढ़ाए पिछले साल जो कि एक बड़ी इकोनॉमी कतर जैसी इकोनॉमी की पूरी इकोनॉमी से ज्यादा पैसा तो जो इनिशिएटिव अभी लिए जा रहे हैं जो स्टार्टअप जो शुरू हो रहे हैं उससे आने वाले समय के अंदर मुझे लगता है कि राजस्थान खाली एक मरु प्रदेश या एक फोर्थ संगीत या कल्चर की जगह की होके उद्यमिता तो यहाँ की पूर्व में बनी हुई है डिजिटलाइजेशन के अंदर भी हम बहुत ज्यादा आगे बढ़ेंगे और अभी राजस्थान सरकार ने फोर हंड्रेड न्यू 
नॉलेज सेंटर्स हो गए हैं आर पी सी एल जो हमारा जो प्रोग्राम है डिजिटल लिटरेसी का उसके माध्यम से और टेन थाउजेंड सेकेंडरी और सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल के अंदर कंप्यूटर लैब स्टेब्लिश करिए इतना भित्ती प्रोग्राम मेरे ख्याल से किसी एक विकासशील राज्य के अंदर जो कुछ समय पहले तक राजस्थान को बहुत ज्यादा औद्योगिक रूप से उन्नत राज्य नहीं माना जाता था उसकी पूरी इमेज बदल गई है पूरी इमेज चेंज हुई है और अभी कुछ दिनों पहले आपने शायद अखबार में पढ़ा होगा जोधपुर के अंदर राजीव गांधी फिनटेक डिजिटल इंस्टीट्यूट अपनी तरीके का एक पहला प्रयोग पहला प्रयास मुख्यमंत्री जी ने कराया छह सौ बहत्तर करोड़ रुपए खर्च करके एक एक यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर के अंदर शुरू करी गई है जो कि इस तरीके की इनिशिएटिव्स को आगे बढ़ाएगी और अभी जैसे बात हो रही थी कि मुख्यमंत्री डिजिटल सेवा योजना के माध्यम से और अभी एक नई बड़ी इसकी मुख्यमंत्री ने घोषणा करी थी कुछ दिनों में आपको मालूम पड़ेगा कि वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट के लिए एक करोड़ पैंतीस लाख जो चिरंजीवी फैमिलीज हैं उनकी जो महिलाएं हैं उनको स्मार्टफोन राज्य सरकार द्वारा दिया जाएगा जिससे उनको फ्री इंटरनेट फ्री कॉलिंग मैसेजिंग सर्विस तीन साल के लिए तीन साल के मैंने तीन साल के लिए फ्री सर्विस के अंदर तो एक करोड़ पैंतीस लाख इस प्रदेश की महिलाएं जिनके हाथ के अंदर पूरा विश्व होगा क्योंकि आपके पास ये टेक्नोलॉजी है आपके हाथ के अंदर एक सेलफोन है तो मुझे लगता है कि इसका बहुत लंबे समय से होने वाला है ये राजकाज जो पोर्टल है उस पर मुझे बताया गया कि लगभग चालीस हजार फाइलें अपलोड हो चुकी हैं और ये जो ये सॉफ्टवेयर है इसकी वजह से पूरे टेक्नोलॉजी में चेंज आएगा और ये टेक्नोलॉजी में चेंज पूरे राजस्थान में आए और जो विभाग में देख रहा हूँ राजस्थान स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रीज कॉर्पोरेशन उसके अंदर भी हम लोगों ने नवाचार लाने की कोशिश करी है कि ये जो डिजिटल जो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है ये हमारे खुद के विभाग के अंदर भी आए हमारे यहाँ जो इन्वाइसिंग होती है वो सारी सारी डिजिटल होने लगी है जो आई चलाते हैं जो इंडियन कंटेनर के पोस्ट जयपुर में जोधपुर के अंदर वो सारे के सारे डिजिटल कर दिए हम लोगों ने जिससे एक्सपोर्टर्स को इम्पोर्टर्स को सी एच एस को बिल्स को मालूम करने के अंदर आपका जो शिपमेंट है आपका जो आपने कंटेनर लगाया था वो कहाँ पहुँचा उसकी पूरी पूरी डिटेल्स बन सके और हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि हमारे ऑफिस में जितने भी जो कर्मचारी हैं जो अधिकारी हैं वो ई फाइलिंग कर रहे हैं राज राज का जो सॉफ्टवेयर है उसको साथ में लेते हुए तो मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि इस समय भी जहाँ हो रहा है कि जो आने वाला आपके सेशन होंगे वो आपके लिए बहुत ही उपयोगी होने वाले हैं और मैं फिकी राजस्थान को उनकी पूरी पूरी टीम को इस तरीके के इनिशिएटिव्स के लिए प्रयासों के लिए बधाई देता हूँ क्योंकि खाली राज्य सरकार के नीति बनाने से राज्य सरकार के परिवर्तन लाने से ही ये देश या प्रदेश आगे नहीं बढ़ सकता है उसके अंदर यहाँ के कॉमर्स और इंडस्ट्री के जो हमारे प्लेयर्स हैं उनकी भागीदारी जरूरी है और अगर आप आगे बढ़ रहे हैं और राज्य सरकार पीछे रह जाए तो भी ठीक नहीं है दोनों कदम से कदम मिला के चलेंगे तो आने वाले समय के अंदर राजस्थान का जो कौन सी इंडस्ट्री है वो नई ऊंचाई पर पहुंचेगा आपने मुझे बुलाया जो सम्मान दिया उसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय हिंद थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर योर एड्रेस एंड मोटिवेशन and before i invite mantrika ji for vote of thanks would like to present uh, mementos uh, so i would request our chairman randeep vikram singh ji to present memento to rajiv mehta ji our chief guest i would request uh, mr bimal patwari ji to present the memento to commissioner industries mr mahendra kumar patwari ji I would request Mr. Ajay Data to present memento to Dr. Manisha Arora Ji, Commissioner BIP. I honor it. 
I would request uh, Ms. Mudrika Dhoka, Chairperson Flow Jaipur Chapter, to present the memento to Paritosh Andreya ji from Director STK. Thank you, Yeah. A quick vote of thanks, sir. I would request Biman Patwari ji to present memento to Mr. Chintan Bakshi. Dr. Ajay Data to present memento to Mr. our chairman, Mr. Randeep Vikram Singh Ji. <laughs> to Mr. Pimal Patwari also. Now I would request Mudrika ji for a quick vote of thanks. She is chairperson of our Jaipur chapter of Fakki Ladies Organization. Uh, welcome. Atulji has made it very clear so very quickly. Uh, we all have heard that money makes the world go around. But the irony is that Bitcoin and UPI has made money also digital. So it would be incorrect to say technology makes a new way to work go around. Good morning everyone, I'm Madhrika Dhoka, Chairperson Jaipur uh, for Vicky Flow. I'm honored to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to the distinguished speakers. Uh, to begin with, Mr. Rajiv Arora ji, uh, Mr. Hendra Kumar uh, Parikh ji, Dr. Manisha Arora, Dr. Paritosh, uh, Mr. Paritosh Dandreya, Dr. Ajay Data, Mr. Chintan Bakshi, Mr. Vimal Patari, Mr. Radeep Vikram Singh and Mr. Atul Sharma, thank you so much for being uh, part of this wonderful conclave. Rapid technological development that are changing the way we live, the way we work and the way we entertain ourselves. It's a force to reckon with and cannot be ignored if we want our businesses to thrive. Going forward, we will witness an accelerated adoption, uh, adoption of technology in governance, businesses and society. Rajasthan has been the front runner state in implementation of technology and governance and last my delivery of services that the state also has a robust startup ecosystem wherein we are working on solutions for our socio-economic challenges and development pursuits using technology. Fiki Ladies Organization has been a catalyst with the assistance of departments like iStart to handhold and provide various type of incubation uh, setups and investments to women-led startups. We have attempted to bridge the gap on the grassroots level following the vision of Digital India, where we provide digital literacy to the rural youth. I would like to thank Fiki for organizing a trailblazing conclave on the technologies and also would like to thank all of our partners for their continuous support for the event. We would like to specially mention the support of Software Technology Park of India, Extensible uh, IT Solutions, Political Infotech, CIIE.co, and I would request all of you to kindly join us for a cup of tea and assemble back for the next session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, quick and crisp vote of thanks. Now I would request all of you to kindly join us for a cup of tea. And we will resume back in 15 minutes for the next session. A quick 15 minutes to break this. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Anil Singh, Group General Manager, Technical Rajcom, Info Services Limited. Ms. Jyoti Lavadia, Technical Director, Department of Information Technology. Ma'am, please. Sir.
मुद्रित है जी एंड Mudrika ji will join in a while. So we will start with plenary session one on emerging technologies and trends, and we have a good mix of speakers from industry as well as government. And uh, the session chairman is Mr. Ravi Mudani. He is the founder and CEO of One to One Finance, India's first NPC factor uh, focused on providing factoring and working capital finance to MSMEs. The company is a brainchild of his doctorate on working capital management and an intense dedication towards streamlining the unorganized space. Dr. Modani's extensive 30 years of plus of experience, uh, success in international business and ability to deal with diverse cultures have contributed to him managing businesses in five countries remotely. He established a customer network across 32 countries. He is president of Thai Rajasthan and has led the chapter to win the global best chapter at Thai Global Summit Dubai in 2021. He has been awarded with MSME Digital Transformer for 2022 by Tele Solutions, a keen learner, he has studied the application of behavioral science in management at IIM Ahmedabad. And Dr. Mudani is a reputed lateral thinking financial advisor to multiple businesses. With this, I hand over the session to Mr. Mudani. Over to you, sir. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, on behalf of Fiki Rajasthan, I welcome you all to this uh, first plenary session today on the seventh edition of Digital Rajasthan Conclave. Digital Rajasthan Conclave, the, the philosophy is embracing technology and transforming lives. So we all know today that everybody right, right to the last bottom of pyramid is connected to technology. I mean from anybody using the smallest mobile phone to whatever we are doing today also, the audio and everything is connected to technology. And technology has been the single most important denominator to transform the lives of everybody. So uh, apart from and the, the state, the government plays a very important role to do this transformation. Because if you see the fundamentally what's happening across the world, I'll just share a quick uh, snapshot. Uh, in the last session, Aziz was talking about the infrastructure, digital infrastructure, right? So, any government, any country can grow if they have a good infrastructure. And today, that I am going the most important infrastructure today is the digital infrastructure. And so, we have seen the government both at the state level and the central level creating a lot of public digital infrastructure like UPI. We have, we have everybody in the hall that use UPI. In days to come, and I am saying days, not months or years, right? We will all be using OODC in terms of building e-commerce. We will all be using OCAN. So we at my company, One Group Finance, have been the pioneer to onboard OCAN. This is the next deception happening into digital lending. And uh, similarly, the account aggregator, all this initiative, even the national health stack, which is being launched very shortly. Uh, even last year there was a product called Ole Direct, so Unified Logistics. So all these public digital infrastructure are creating a, a network of uh, various APIs and the public and the startups, all the established businesses can just play, plug and play and create a new disruption. So we'll hear about those things from, uh, from somebody in the, uh, from the government sector. Another thing which is happening across the globe is the cloud for digital transformation. So if you want to create a right infrastructure to transform lives, instead of having a physical infrastructure, the things are moving to cloud. And cloud is required for anything, right? For mobile banking, for taxis today, for uh, storing the data, for apps, everything. Even what we, are, uh, what we are speaking today is being streamed through the cloud or to various media as well. Next important thing which is very important and which is unique to India is the youth. The industry 4.0 which we are talking about. So India turns out almost like 65 lakh graduates every year. Out of those graduates, 20 are uh, out of those 23% of the graduates, which is 15 lakh engineering students. So probably India is the largest country in the world to get engineers every year. 
and engineers are the core to make a not only uh, IT a solution but also to create an entire digital solutions to you know empower the uh, the manpower empower the operation of the company. And the youth, so 27.2% of the uh, Indian population youth. So we have an advantage in terms of the global uh, phenomena where we have youth, number one, we have the highest engineers. All the embedded things which are required to make the global digital giant from India. Similarly, the next thing which is happening here in the country is the event. So this is an event and I'm sure uh, Mudrika will able to on uh, that thing. So you know what we have been all doing events physically for a long time. I think COVID disrupted the entire thing. From a physical event, we have moved to virtual event. We have seen conferences, we have a time, we have done a time global conference on a virtual with a different rooms and chairs and seating. And in the extent that even a person had their seat number and a visiting pass to enter that digital event. So there's a lot of disruption happening in the event industry. Even, even today, weddings and conferences are moving from a uh, totally physical to a hybrid model. New norm will be convergence and integration. So, what's going to happen? The new playbook for digital technology for embracing life will be uh, convergence and integration. So, uh, that's for the introduction of the session. Now, we have a very distinguished panel speaking today on these uh, four topics. You know, so we have got Anil Singh, who is a group general manager, technical. From Rashma Info Services, he is the uh, he has been more than 30 years experience in managing various e-governance projects. He has served on ADB, Asian Development Bank, MI Expert. He has been involved in the key IT projects of the state, like the data center, Abhay command center, online submission application forms, RCAD, Rajiv Gandhi FinTech Digital Institute of Rajasthan. He has been fascinated by the honorable chief minister for the highest merit award in the state. The award for giving for the outstanding work in the field of e-governance. He has done schooling from St. Xavier's and got four postgraduate degrees in the field of commerce, management, computer sciences. We also have to so welcome you to the uh, program. We have also have Shipra Bhalla Chaudhary, the senior director from SAP India. Shipra is working as senior director of government affairs, SAP India. Uh, and she is responsible for driving the thought leadership and strategic engagements for staff with the government and other related stakeholders. Her domain of responsibilities covered engagements related to policies such as cloud, IoT, cybersecurity, and key programs including Digital India, Industry 4.0, Smart City, Startup India, Skill India, etc. She is also responsible for strategic public sector business support. She comes from with her over 22 years of diverse experience uh, in corporate affairs, enterprise sales, before SAP, she had worked with Intel, where she was handling strategic alliances and corporate affairs. Prior to Intel, she had worked with SIFI, Avaya, Shiroz, and Intel in areas related to communities, development, and social impact, building strategic relationships with government, new business, large power management, and building partnership ecosystem. Welcome, Shikra. Then we have Jyot, uh, Ms. Jyoti Luhadia for taking the director, Department of Information Technology, Government of Rajasthan. Jyoti is working as Technical Director in DOPI, uh, Government of Aistan and ED as Rajiv Gandhi Center of Advanced Technology. She has been instrumental to spread awareness of IT in government, employees since 1990, and uh, implementation of human resources, related activities of IT policy of Aistan government. She has worked towards implementing statewide IT projects of online admissions, examination, academic ERP, e-learning, etc. She has also been looking after the website, the portal of the government, and social media presence of the government. Uh, welcome to the event, Jyoti. And lastly, the uh, Mudrika Dhoka, she is the chairperson of Jaipu chapter of Fikki Lady Organization, which is again a host party to the event today. Mudrika has been the chairperson of uh, FLO, and she is a director of Chandra Entrepreneurs Private Limited. She is an MBA and leads the events and advertising verticals alongside her. Husband in cities like Jaipur, Delhi, and Mumbai. Being in the field of events for the last 17 years, she has gained her knowledge of executing enchanting events and not to forget her delegate team with whose expertise they managed to fold forge and create a niche in the market of government, public events, and corporate too. 
Her expertise at handling strike from various domains such as telecom, electronics, government, and banking and finance sector has helped her in shaping the today and tomorrow progressive vision of the company. We will hear from her, hear from her about the technologies and liberal for the future of the Welcome to Madhurika. And before I call upon Anil to take up the lead to share his vision and share his thought about the uh, digital and embracing technologies and uh, emerging trends in the uh, technologies. Uh, and I just share the format so we will have a speaker coming up doing this presentation and then at the end we have the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. I will be uh, taking you through the digital journey of Rajasthan. This is a snapshot which uh, depicts the journey of uh, digital Rajasthan. It started way back in 1987 when the Department of Computers was first created in Rajasthan. This department uh, later was renamed as Department of Information Technology and Communication in the year 2002. Another organization in the name of Center for Electronic Data Processing was created in the year 1989, which was later converted into a, a government company in the year 2010 and, and was named as Rajasthan Info, Rajasthan Info Service Limited. Uh, Rajasthan has come out with three IT policies as of now. First IT policy was launched in the year 2000. Second IT policy came in the year 2007. Third came in the year 2015. And fourth IT policy is due and would probably be out any time during this year. There was one guideline uh, that was issued by government in 2009 where departments were given free hand to utilize 3% of their planned budget for e-governance uh, initiatives of their department. So that also provided a boost uh, for uh, increasing e-governance in the departments. At the same time, in, at national level, the Department of Electronics was uh, created in the year 1970, NIC in 1977, Nixie in 1995, and various, like uh, one of the important programs was National E-Governance Program which came in 2006, which changed the entire scenario of e-governance across the country. Then various guidelines and policies have come up, 2009 uh, guidelines for Indian government websites, 2013 national cyber security policy, cloud policy, then NEGB 2.0 which was called e granti came up in 2014-15. And the major contribution uh, has been by the Department of Information Technology and Rajkom from state level and from uh, national level it's, it has been NIC and NICSI which have been major contributors for digitalizing our state. These, these are the major projects which have created a complete digital ecosystem in the state. The digital infrastructure project includes State Data Center, Rajnet. Rajnet is again a compilation of 2-3 projects. We will touch upon those. Rajasthan uh, Video Conferencing, Video Walls, Abhay Command Center, then Citizen Interface Applications like Janadhar, Jan Sushna, E Mitra, Rajasthan Sampark, Rajasthan Kisan Sati, then common platform which are being used by all applications Rajasthan e sign, e sanchar, a messaging application, single sign on, e word, Rajdhara, GIS application, Raj Kaj, office automation applications like Raj Kaj, RTI portal, Raj ERP. And then capacity building and startups, uh, which include Rajas Knowledge Network, Knowledge uh, Corporation Limited, Rajiv Gandhi Center of Advanced Technology, uh, Rajasthan Institute of Advanced Learning, Rajiv Gandhi Institute of uh, sorry, FinTech Digital uh, Institute, and Innovation Hubs. These are the major projects which have created a complete ecosystem. We are not touching upon any of the sector specific applications. Uh, or department specific application down here. This is the common infrastructure which all, all applications are use, using basically. First and foremost is the state data center. Again, Rajasthan is the number one state 
uh, of having created a 600 rack data center which is tier 4 certified by uptime the only data center which is being uh, which has been certified by uptime in government space across country i know i think this is the biggest data center which even nic does not have a 600 rack data center and we have got almost four data center and one dr site at jodhpur uh, and a complete around 800 rack capacity is with us and basic uh, requirement of a data center is for uh, storing all data and information related to all government websites and application uh, and for business con uh, continuity and information security data center is required basically for business continuity and information security rajnet uh, in fact this project started off with a uh, with a small project of setland which is we called uh, this was basically for uh, providing a local area network in entire segregated premises which constituted around 3000 plus nodes later this was extended to a metropolitan area network where we established fiber connectivity to all government buildings in Rajasthan DOIT has its own fiber network across uh, all districts uh, for connecting all government offices then, uh, then uh, under NEGB program, uh, there were one of the core projects which was SWAN, State Wide Area Network, for providing vertical connectivity between state headquarter to district headquarter and district headquarter to block headquarter. And there are uh, 273 POPs and almost 5000 offices which have been connected uh, through horizontal connection in each district and block headquarters. Now, after coming of Bharat uh, Net, uh, even uh, the Block headquarters have been connected to Gram Panchayat. So, oh, there is a complete connectivity, vertical connectivity from state headquarters to district and district to block and block to Gram Panchayat. Uh, and also, we have established uh, uh, around 10,000 Wi Fi spots, hotspots. Every government building has a Wi Fi hotspot, and all Gram Panchayats are having Wi Fi hotspots across the state. Then uh, Rajasthan video conferencing uh, is again a major project which uh, we have done. Eight telepresence rooms are present uh, across all divisional headquarters. 600 plus video conferencing rooms have been established which were extensively used during COVID period by uh, Honorable Chief Minister and all the uh, ministers. Uh, these have been established at block headquarters. All district headquarters are having video conferencing facility and even all block headquarters are having video conferencing facility plus government has also provided e-mitra plus machines which also have a video conferencing facility so 9891 e-mitra plus machines have been installed and there is a facility to link to this video conferencing through desktop, through your own desktop, mobile, laptop, any other devices this is a just a diagram then next is the video walls all government schemes, audio video streaming can be done on these uh, video walls. Around 339 video walls have been installed across 33 districts, both at the district headquarter level and block headquarter level. Then uh, a complete EPBX facility through IP phone, IP based, uh, IP based network has been established. 2000 odd phones in, in Jebo, 2600 odd phones at district level, then at block level and Panchayat Samiti level. Everything is connected through IP phones. Away command center, again we got a command and control center at all district headquarters uh, to take up city surveillance, dial 100, uh, computer area dispatch and integrated uh, traffic management system. So this is again a big project which has been established. Next is the citizen interface applications. The Janadar application for providing uh, uh, identity to a family. Aadhaar provides an identity to an individual, but Janadar provides an identity to a family. And this is basically uh, a, a scheme which was formulated for financial inclusion, for women empowerment, and for direct benefit transfer. The woman head of the family, a uh, woman is declared as the head of the family under this scheme. And it has been ensured that head of a family should have a bank account and a uh, Aadhaar number. So that was a prerequisite for enrolling in under Janadhar scheme. At present, uh, 
we have enrolled 1.94 crore family in this database, covering around 7.54 crore residents. So almost 97% of the population has been covered. And uh, this scheme is also being used for uh, direct, for direct benefit transfer to the beneficiaries of the state. And as of now, we have done 127 crore transaction through this, uh, dispersing around 60,000 crore rupees to the beneficiaries. This is the highest in the country. Only uh, government of India has done uh, higher dignity than us. None of the other states are anywhere near to us. Then there is a Jan Sushma portal, uh, portal which provides information about all the schemes that government is running. Uh, it is covering around 115 departments and 329 schemes. Detail about 329 schemes that have been provided on this portal. e uh, is again a flagship project of this uh, which uh, we are running. There are more than 80,000 self-sustaining kiosks uh, across state. Uh, which are providing 600 plus G2C, B2C application like telephone bill payment, uh, car certificate, bona fide resident certificate, all those kind of stuff. And uh, we have also provided uh, human less interface through eMitra plus machines which have been installed in both in rural areas as well as in urban area. And at the same time, eMitra at the rate home service has been started in uh, Jaipur and Jodhpur. All these services are available at your home also. You can call upon Initra and uh, avail those services at home. This uh, application is doing almost 60 to 70 lakh transactions a month and collecting revenue of up to 700 to 800 crores in a month. And Initra facility is available across all uh, Gram Panchayat, Block, and even villages. Only 1600 villages are uh, left which are not being covered under e -Mitra. Then we have got Rajasthan Sampark, it's a grievance portal, a grievance registration tracking and redresser portal. Till now we have received around 1.10 uh, crore grievances from residents of the state and 1.08 crores have been disposed of. The disposal rate is almost 98.39%. And uh, the facility is uh, like you can file your grievance through uh, directly making a 